Before I start this episode of the new Creative You podcast, I want to ask you to take part in a short experiment. I want you to sit comfortably, close your eyes and turn up the volume on your audio device. If you are in a gym doing a workout, you can focus your attention on one spot while listening to the audio. And if you are driving, well, keep driving and forget about the experiment. Your safety comes first. Uh, I'm going to play an audio taken from one of my favorite movies, The Others, by Alejandro Amelavar. This scene features Nicole Kidman, the mother, and Alakina Mann, the daughter in the film. Pay close attention to the audio. Why can't you ever do as you're told? What's the matter? What have you done with my daughter? Are you mad? I am your daughter. <gasps> no! You're not my daughter! No! 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 You're not my daughter! No! No! Wow, did it scare you or cause an anticipation that something very sinister is about to happen? If it did, well, it means that you have just been primed. Priming is a psychological phenomenon where recently perceived stimuli or information influence your perception. In this particular example, dramatic sound effects that the director used activated in your mind series of subconscious associations which emphasized the tension between the actors and made the scene appear even more horrific. In this episode, I'm going to talk about priming and how you can use it to boost your creative thinking or achieve your future goals. Hello creative people and welcome to the new Creative You podcast. Unlike the previous episodes which were part of the Deciphering Creativity serial, please check it out if you want to learn more about how creativity works and the ways to improve your creative powers. Uh, This episode is the first one of the single episodes that I will be creating in the future. In case you have tuned in the new Creative You podcast for the first time, then welcome to the podcast that explores various topics connected to creative thinking and offers practical advice on how you can boost your creativity and your thinking in general. My name is Peja and I hope that you will like this and the episodes that are to come. Enjoy! Like I mentioned in the introduction, this episode is about the phenomenon of priming, how it affects your thinking and how you can use it to improve your thinking and reach your personal goals. Every single day we are primed into thinking specific thoughts. Sometimes priming occurs spontaneously. For example, you may have split up with your partner recently and now you keep on seeing his or her face in every stranger that that passes you in the street. 
or um, a person who has ornithophobia, which is a fear of birds, may feel uneasy whenever a pigeon flies over their head. Or you may have watched a scary film and now you cannot fall asleep because you hear strange sounds in your room. Priming is often used in advertising to lead consumers into making certain purchase decisions. Remember the picture of, of a dress that had the great viral effect, uh, the one that the internet users could not agree whether it was blue or gold color. The question that went with the photo, uh, is this dress blue or gold color, primed people's brain into thinking about these two colors and influenced their perception to indeed see one of the two. But how exactly priming works? Every day, our brain processes large amounts of data to help us navigate through life. The data is organized in countless sets of schemas which form one large schema or schemata, mental framework or concept that we use to organize and understand the world. Imagine schemata in the form of a 3D structure consisting of separate elements, uh, similar to the structure of a molecule but on a much larger scale. One of the elements is the concept of a dog. This dog element is connected to many other concepts like playful, furry, friend, home, loyalty, etc. The loyalty element and dog element may be linked to each other via the friend concept. But the loyalty element is also connected to many other concepts like country, family, honesty, security, etc. Every single part of schemata, be it a physical object, personal name, number, color, emotion or any other concept, is connected to many other concepts via a series of associations created in our mind. Schematas are highly individual structures. While some conceptual links or associations are universal, like um, the sky and blue, countless other subtle associations are unique to each person and they influence the structure of the personal schemata. Evolution created schemata to help our mind organize and understand the world around us. It helps us make everyday decisions, solve problems, reflect on past and future and behave as social beings. Schemata regulates the way we think, but to be honest, it does not add much to our creativity since most of the thinking inside schemata is done automatically. This evolutionary mechanism helps us make decisions and react fast to the external events, but it also leads our mind into finding the most obvious solutions to our problems, which are not always the most creative one. However, schemata is a gold mine of associations that can be used in creative thinking. The creative brain can navigate through this complex web of elements and reach different parts of schemata skipping from one element or concept to another until it meets the concept that best matches the starting point in its journey. When two or more elements in schemata connect, a new idea emerges in our mind. Some individuals can spontaneously move through their schemata while others may need some encouragement and training in creative thinking. To be able to use your schemata in a creative way, you need to develop associative thinking. The best way to do it is to learn to embrace the improbable, impossible, irrational, crazy, exaggerated, fantastic thoughts because they hold a key to your subconsciousness. By allowing yourself to include such thoughts in your thinking process and not dismiss them, you will break the boundaries of your usual thinking and open a door to new possibilities and new ideas. Let us go back to priming. Priming is an increased sensitivity to a particular schema due to a previous or recent experience. Imagine you had a German Shepherd dog when you were a child. You are walking down the street and you spot a gentleman walking a German Shepherd dog coming towards you. It is very likely that you will stop and pat the dog and even start a conversation with the man. You will probably have 
friendly feelings towards the man, even though you know nothing about what kind of person he is. In this case, the exposure to one stimulus, your favorite breed of dog, influenced the reaction to a subsequent one, friendly attitude towards its owner. Priming effects can occur with perceptually, linguistically or conceptually related stimuli. There was a study done in the Department of Psychology at the University of Palermo when the researchers Abate, Ruggieri and Bocca tested the effect of linguistic priming on the students. The students were divided into two groups and asked to complete a test where they had to make the sentence out of the scrambled words. The first group was offered sets of words related to prosociality, for example, to give, aid, to lend. And the control group was offered neutral words unrelated to prosociality, for example, the piano, to read, landscape. When they finished the test, they were approached by a confederate asking them if they were willing to offer some money to a student association that provides books for disadvantaged undergraduates. Afterwards, the confederate left the room. To avoid self-presentation bias, participants could leave money in an envelope on the table. In the group that was primed with socially positive words, the percentage of students who donated money was 34% higher than that in the control group who were not primed with socially positive words. Another research conducted at Yale University led by Professor John Barge focused on the effects of priming on the embodied cognition. The researchers were interested in how the sense of touch, paired with the brain's ability, can affect how the world is perceived. They found that subjects who read a passage about an interaction between two people were more likely to characterize it as adversarial if they had first handled rough jigsaw puzzle pieces compared to smooth ones. The subjects who were sitting in hard, Cushionless chairs were less willing to compromise in price negotiations than people who sat in soft, comfortable chairs. Another group of subjects were inclined to judge other people to be more generous and caring after they had briefly held a warm cup of coffee rather than a cold drink. Somehow they subconsciously connected the tactile feeling of warmth with the abstract concept of warm, friendly human relations which affected their perception of the other people. Priming can influence our lives in both positive and negative ways. The most common manifestations of priming are stereotypes and biases. We all have them. Through stereotypes and biases, we are at times primed to perceive people in a way which is sometimes not fair because we can never grasp the complexity of their personality or their life situation. We are primed daily by the politicians and media to think and behave in a certain way. Do not believe everything you hear in the media, instead use your brain to compare, analyze and sift false and irrelevant information from those that you can use to better yourself. Avoid being overwhelmed with bad news because being surrounded by negativity can prime your mind to accept negativity as something normal. Purge your mind from the repetitive, negative or self-degrading thoughts because they will trick your brain into creating a demeaning perception of yourself. Avoid being surrounded by people who do not share your values and moral attitudes. Their views and lifestyle can have an adverse priming effect on your life, making you eventually become one of them. There is a condition that psychology calls second-hand stress. If you are surrounded by people who are under pressure, after some time you will also enter a stress mode, even though you do not have any rational reason to feel stressed out. One research confirms that when sad persons forced themselves to smile, the facial muscle contractions primed their brain into feeling happier. Being surrounded by optimistic people can help you not to think negative thoughts. 
So use the effects of secondhand smile or, or the secondhand success or secondhand fitness lifestyle and surround yourself with people who will have positive influence on your thinking and behavior. By priming your mind in the right way, you will create new schemas in your brain and these schemas will influence your everyday life by guiding it in the direction that you desire. Some people call this the law of attraction, but I call it priming. If you are looking for business success, learn from successful people. Be near them, find a mentor among them, study their biographies, read books they wrote. Try to pick up their brains and eventually you will share the same thinking style. If you are a creative person, spend time with other creative people. Creative energy is expansive and contagious. Use other people's creativity as inspiration and motivation for your own work. The environment around you can also prime your mind into thinking special thoughts. Everybody loves sunshine, don't we? It, it makes us feel more energized and optimistic. Try to create a stimulating environment in your office or at home. Please get rid of all broken and, and dusty objects that surround you, of all the details that are getting on your nerves but you never seem to have enough time to deal with them. Declutter your space and your mind. Move forward, make room for the new things that excite you and inspire you. Another excellent tool for priming your mind is visioning. It can come in the form of a vision board where you can pin the photos illustrating your goals and values and be constantly reminded of them. People who have created a vision of their future life are able to prioritize, they make better choices and are able to shift their energy in the right direction. A ship which knows which port it belongs to will eventually find its course towards it. Choose your port or else you will get lost at sea. Meditation and visualization are tools used by top performers in business and sport. Meditation can help you gain control over your thoughts and visualizations can make your visions even more vivid and emotionally charged, so the priming can be even more effective. Our brain cannot distinguish between the images created in our mind and those perceived by our eyes. When you visualize a tranquil scene or a walk in the woods in the spring, for example, your brain will perceive it as reality and your whole system will calm down. If you visualize the life that you wish to build, your brain will create mental connections within your schemata that will support that vision and it will become easier for you to achieve it. Positive affirmations use linguistic priming to create positive schemas in your mind. I do not believe in ready-made affirmations that you can find in the books or online. I prefer to create my own, those that have real meaning for me. For a very long time, I suffered from vehophobia, a fear of driving. I used to have irrational and terrifying thoughts whenever I found myself behind the wheel. My greatest fear was that I would cause a major traffic disaster, that there would be casualties, that I will end up in jail or smashed inside the car. There was no way I could relax and enjoy the numerous benefits of being able to drive a car. Finally, I decided to confront the phobia head-on. I started to drive bit by bit, first on the parking lots, then at night in the streets where there were not much traffic. Whenever I felt panic level rising, I repeated in my mind the affirmation I created. I am a careful and responsible driver. I enjoy driving and the freedom that mobility gives me. These words overpowered negative thoughts in my mind and, and helped me focus on my driving. The moment I became present in the act of driving, the fear disappeared. If you decide to fight phobia or, or exit your comfort zone for the sake of achieving some goal, you need to prime your brain for success. I suggest you start small, like me. Start with small achievements and they will prepare your brain for more significant successes. They will convince your mind that you can do it, no matter how difficult it initially appeared. If you want to become a writer, start by writing 200 words every day. If you're going to become more athletic, start by doing light exercises two or three times a week. 
Another priming tool is personal rituals. Rituals are not as nonsensical as they may appear. They serve to switch your brain into the desired mode. Athletes often have rituals that help them disconnect from the outside reality and stay more focused on the present moment and their performance. Creative people have their own rituals, uh, using a particular pen when writing, playing specific music while painting, standing while working on the computer, etc. These rituals automatically switch their brain into a creative mode. Uh, they signal their brain that it is time to relax and focus on the task. A relaxed brain can more easily enter the theta brainwave frequency when intuition and creativity flourish. My universal advice to you is to try and create a lifestyle that will positively prime your mind. If you are an aspiring artist, visit galleries and various different places that inspire your creativity. If you are a future IT specialist, pick a coffee shop where IT people gather and make it your favorite place. Fake it till you make it. By acting in line with the future vision of you, you will create schemata that will begin to support that particular vision. Even the small steps will have a significant impact on your subconscious mind, so do not waste time, prime yourself for success and start today. And now, the ultimate priming advice. Priming is very effective when used against aggression. If your response to an attack is aggression, it will prime the other side to feel even more anger. If, on the other hand, your reaction to aggression is kindness, your actions will prime the other side to cool off. Your kindness will make their aggression lose the point. The other person's negative energy will subside instead of being encouraged by your negative response. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this episode, please like, comment and share it with your creative friends. In the following days, I will be recording new podcast shows, but in the meantime, until I put them online, I suggest you visit my blog at newcreativeview.com and discover some interesting topics there. There you will also find links to my social media profiles so you can follow me and stay up to date with what is going on with the new Creative You project. I have one final request for you. Please, please, stay healthy and creative.